Hey guys, this video is sponsored by Ibble. Make sure you guys download the app, follow me, and talk to me on there. Hey guys, welcome back to the Blair White Project podcast. So a bit of a switch up today. I'm here solo all by myself because everyone hates me and no one wants to be a guest on my show anymore. Uh, actually, I wanted to do a solo episode for a while. I thought it'd be cool to kind of just go through sort of the news of the week with you guys, react to headlines, articles, just talk shit, you know, because honestly, I feel like I have such a relationship with my audience that I can totally just come on here and just talk with y'all. This is family time. There's no guests. There's no one in here, you know, muddying it up. Like it's just you and me. So we're going to talk today about a few articles, recent happenings, and, um, I can't promise to not go the fuck off because all of them, all these headlines I've been sent really piss me off. So the first one, oh, by the way, there were so many comments apparently in the last video of the podcast, obviously about me vaping people surprised. Um, do you think I can come here and have like hour and a half long conversations without getting a little bit? It, it happens. It happens. Okay. So Newsom signs bill to allow minors from other states to receive medical gender transitions without parental consent. Right off the bat, I want to spurg out. I want to like every limb wants to go in every direction. So we're just going to start off with how much I hate Gavin Newsom, right? We can get into the actual shit, but just Newsom. So obviously as a native Californian and someone who lived in LA and California for the majority of lockdowns, Gavin Newsom to me, like even just hearing his name and seeing his disgusting face triggers something in me. Like I have just these memories of being like, you know, eight weeks deep into the two weeks to slow the spread in LA, right? For which LA lockdowns were different than every other lockdown. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't go outside. Um, and I just remember tuning in to Newsom's press conferences that he had every single day where he kept promising that soon there was going to be news about how we're free again and we can leave the house and blah, blah, blah. That day never came. <laughs> in fact, flash forward from that time period to when I moved to Texas, it was still going on. <laughs> so I have issues with Newsom. Um, it, I'm pretty sure he's going to be running for president in 2024, which... I'm going to be basically, y'all know, like the super crazy, like anti-Trump people who think he's literally Hitler. I might literally <laughs> jump to Newsom was literally Hitler after living under his leadership in California. But anyways, so he signed this bill to allow minors from other states to receive medical gender transitions. This is basically making California a sanctuary state for limb removal. Like you've heard of sanctuary states and now sanctuary states for um, kids removing their penises. So... Here we go. Let's read some of this. On Thursday, California Governor Gavin Newsom signed into a law a piece of legislation that will designate the state as a sanctuary for children and teens seeking medicalized gender transitions. You know what's so funny is I said sanctuary state as a joke, and they're literally referring to it as a sanctuary state. Yes, life has absolutely dwindled down to this. Um, <laughs> Newsom's signature on the bill, SB 107, comes nearly a month after the California legislature passed State Senator Scott Weiner's bill, which was introduced in 2021. Um, he's still alive. Scott Wiener's still alive. I actually had no fucking clue. Um, the bill allows families or individual minors who travel to the state for the purpose of these medical procedures to be safe from out of state authorities acting on subpoenas, warrants, and child custody issues if the minor was brought into the state for procedures like surgical gender reassignments or the prescribing of cross sex hormones. And what's really an issue here for me is the fact that this makes it so. <laughs> It's one thing I can wrap my head around, you know, I mean, I can't really wrap my head around it, but I guess I can pretend to wrap my head around people who support gender transitions for kids, right? I'm vehemently against it. I don't have to fucking, you know, tell you all the reasons why I'm against it. We've gone over that. However, the idea that they can now go to California without parental consent, which are kids allowed to cross state lines without parental consent? Is that a thing? You can just hop up and go. I don't know if that's a thing. Um... But the fact that they don't need parental sign off to go and have these procedures done is so insane. And this is just one of those things that I really I can't put myself in the mindset of anyone who thinks this is remotely OK. Like. Even if you support children transitioning, the idea that they can do it without any parental consent is disgusting. Um, but it just goes to show that no matter how far, no matter how fast we are hurtling towards the edge of the cliff, these people are just dead set on continuing the fucking ride. They're they're pump, they're pushing the gas. They're not pushing the brake. Okay, 
I'm literally so happy. Y- y'all know the story about, or maybe you don't know the story. I talked about it before, but um, I recently went back to my plastic surgeon's office that did all of my work during my transition. And um, the clerk or whatever, the front desk woman came up to me and uh, said she had seen me on Rogan, recognized me, whatever. She started going off, which I don't know if she watched my Rogan episode, why she would say this, but she did. She said that she's really, really, you know, distraught because she recently had to cancel a appointment for a 14 year old to get a double mastectomy. This was in Texas, okay? And the reason she had to cancel was they recently changed the laws. Um, And so she expected me, obviously, because I'm fucking trans, to sit there and like cry with her. I don't know that she can't chop off a 14 year old's boobs. I guess she wanted me to fucking cry with her. I don't know. Regardless, the fact that that was happening in Texas, God only knows what happens in blue states. And also the fact that now there's this, it's like, there's really just no end in sight to this shit, is there? There, there really isn't. And But you know what's so crazy is... Europe, in so many ways, is consistently ahead of, you know, the U.S. in terms of social issues, many examples, but the trans kid thing is one of them, right? So back in the day when there was like three trans kids, right, and Kim Petras was one of them, shout out to Kim. I heard that her new music video was a flop. Um, Maybe you shouldn't have talked shit about me. I don't know. Look at me being messy. I can't. You know, know the thing about Kim Petras, the fact is, like, she came for me and she, here's the story. Side note, this is going to be a really ADHD podcast. Are you here for it? I'm here for it. Kim Petras, trans pop singer, slid in my DMs to say how much she supported me, how much she loved me, blah, 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 like very kind DMs. And I was taken aback because I was actually a supporter. I actually would consistently tell my supporters to buy her music because I think the the you know concept of a trans pop star is amazing. And I would want to support that if I could. And she was making good music. So I was very flattered that she slid in my DM just to tell me she loved me, right? Flash forward, I don't know, maybe it was a few days later, a week later, I don't know, but a very short time period. She's on Twitter saying, fuck Blair. I didn't know she was right wing, right wing TM, Um, you know, just going off basically as only a dumbass like her would. And um, it's so crazy because she works with an alleged rapist. Uh, What's the name of her producer, Dr. Luke? Yeah, I would much rather be a center right relatively moderate, politically minded person and be canceled for that than be canceled for working with an alleged rapist like Kim Petras. So um, shout out to you, Kim. I hope that you can someday see the light and um, let me stop being a bitch. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) I'm very reserved in my main channel videos in which I edit down to 10 minutes to 15 minutes a piece. Here, we're just running my mouth. So, but again, we're family, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, the Gavin Newsom thing was disgusting. Next article, NY schools face stark drops in math proficiency in wake of COVID-19 pandemic. What a fucking shocker. There's going to be social ramifications for having kids stay in the house for two and a half years with masks and face shields on and not go to school and not interact with people and not see people's faces and have important development in the, and have all this happen in their important development years rather There are literally kids that grew up in those two years from like what, like two to four who like don't even really know what it's like to see a face. And it's like a new thing for them to see a face. Totally healthy. Could have never seen this coming that kids are going to have learning issues. And you know what's so, I'm going to get to it. I got to read some of this, but this, this one I'm going to go off on. New York City schools face stark drops in math in the first release of state test scores since the COVID-19 pandemic, while reading scores remain steady. You know, that actually makes sense because if they're at home, they're still reading. And honestly, kids are always reading now. They're on their phones. They're consistently reading on their phones. So that makes sense. However, it makes absolute sense that they're struggling in math, which first of all, I struggle in math even without a pandemic. But um, it makes sense because that's the kind of thing you have to be really consistent on learning. And it's about repetition and it's about, you know, learning the flow of it. So I can totally see why that would be disrupted. Um, About 46% of students were math proficient before the pandemic and the last time of the exams were mostly given to the city's school children. Um, And now it's about 38% being proficient in it. So, you know, I just think it's really unfortunate that we had, you know, COVID, which obviously disproportionately affects older people. And, you know, we really did sacrifice the young in many ways 
to deal with COVID. Like the people, the, the segment of society that got hit the hardest in terms of dealing with the aftermath, at least, is definitely kids. And I think that's so sad, you know. It's a little rare here in Texas. However, you still do see occasionally like going to a grocery store, going to HEB, pick a store, and you will see little kids in masks and face shields. And I have this visceral like negative reaction to seeing it because it's so fucking sad. And I can't imagine, you know, as traumatic as my childhood was, I can't imagine also living it through like a face shield and like a grocery store and like being scared of the world around me. And I, I understand there's gray area to this, right? Like, obviously, I would never make any sort of comment to the parents of these kids because who the fuck am I? And B, you know, you never know that kid might be dealing with an issue that does leave them more vulnerable. However, even if like 50 or even if 75% of the kids that are still wearing masks and facials are dealing with issues that they maybe should be having extra protection, it still is sad to know that it's clearly not the case always. And there clearly are, you know, those parents out there that are still so like ran by COVID and so like hyper conscious about it to the point where it's like they're making their kids suffer and they don't care. Like if there's a kid playing outside with a face mask on, which you still do see sometimes, That's fucked up. I can't think of any other way to describe it. I mean, it's just wrong. And 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 kids dealing with, you know, educational issues and, and delays in their like intellectual development is one thing. And you have the fact that like, I don't know, like everyone I know got majorly addicted to substances during COVID. Not literally everyone, but a lot of people. I didn't vape before COVID. I literally never did this before COVID. That's one thing. Um, I stopped drinking in COVID though, because who wants to drink at home? So that was kind of a good thing. I don't really drink anymore. Like I'll have a wine at dinner, maybe sometimes. Um, but you know, there's so much mental health issues that came about through COVID and and so much trauma. Like I, I literally, I think I might've talked about this with, I think it was Sydney Watson. I don't know who I talked about this with, but I had gone off of her about how like, you know how your brain will block out certain memories due to the trauma and just like, it's better for you as a human being to function without having to remember something like that. I literally think that that happened to me with COVID in 2020. Um, there are huge segments of that year that I don't remember really anything that was happening. Like I can remember certain major events. Like, I don't know, I went to uh, Vegas in July with Jacqueline Glenn. Um, what else happened in 2020? Uh, I went to Big Bear twice. Um, but like what my life was like in that era is just so blacked out. And I think it's from the trauma of it. I think it's from the trauma of just witnessing this like hive mind, this crazy collective thing that happened in the human consciousness. Um, what's the phrase they always use now to describe sort of what happened there with like everyone jumping on board and being like a hive mind? It was um, uh, contagion, no, mass formation, right? My producer is like mass formation. I can't hear him. It's okay. Mass formation, psychosis. I think that's what it was. 100%. That's what it was. And, and you know, as someone who's always had a very natural aversion to collectivism ever since a little kid, um, I remember being a very young kid and kind of looking at sort of the way in which humanity kind of moved, which seemed to be like in stride and unison, despite all the conflict, you know, there are certain things everyone jumps on board with, right? I remember being a little kid and thinking, why are we doing this? It doesn't make sense. I can't even pull up an example right now. I just know that's a mindset I had, right? Why is everyone jumping on board with this instantly and not thinking about it? Collectivism and sort of this hive mind thing has always been like a literal phobia of mine. So it was kind of like every phobia <laughs> came to be in 2020 for me. So a lot got blocked out. And I, I doubt I'm the only person for which that's, you know, the case, you know, mental health, suicides, all that. It's, it's just, there's so much that went on during that period and it's still to an extent happening now, even though we're in this period of pretending it never happened, right? Oh, the world never shut down. Oh, there wasn't ever no food on the shelves in the grocery stores. Oh, there wasn't like mass riots. Oh, there wasn't, you know what I mean? It's like, there wasn't a crazy presidential election in the middle of all of it. Like we're in this period of pretending it didn't happen, but there are a lot of mental health ramifications that I can see just in people around me. Like even just like, I don't know, like everyone just seems so quick to snap on the street. Like being on the streets feels weird, right? Like it's just, it's just a lot. So moving on, <laughs> this one, <laughs> I can't with this one. First openly trans US Army officer, Jamie Lee Henry. Why does she look like the trans Jamie Lee Curtis? 
Like, is that what she's going for? <laughs> Um, and wife, Anna Gabriellen, charged with scheme to give info to Russia. So you have a Russian spy, a trans Russian spy. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's like, is there ever a positive trans story? Like, I, I understand that oftentimes I'm guilty of covering negative trans stories, right? Because I think there's a purpose for it. I think there's a reason. And I think that it communicates to the outside world that, okay, thank God there's trans people acknowledging this and talking about this, right? Like that's my MO, y'all know the drill. However, I also genuinely don't really even see any genuinely positive trans headlines from right or left. Like even the left is positive headlines. I would love to report on these positive trans headlines. Like are there trans people like rescuing people out of burning buildings? Like let me fucking know. And that bitch is getting a dedicated main channel video. I swear to God. However, the uplifting positive trans stories that you see say on, I don't know, like CNN, MSNBC, like, like pick an outlet, right? Disney plus it's all like so inspirational. 12 year old has their breasts removed. It's like, I would love to report on these positive headlines, but I don't believe they're truly positive. Um, <laughs> so the trans Russian spy, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, U.S. Army Major Jamie Lee Henry, 39, and her wife, Johns Hopkins Hospital anesthesiologist Anna Gabriellen, 36, are, are accused of helping Russia during the ongoing war against Ukraine. Ooh. I mean, she has a look. Henry publicly came out did they just, no, that's the last name. I thought, I thought they literally, meant, I thought they called a trans woman by the dead name. Anyways, Henry publicly came out as transgender in 2015 and was reported as the first known active duty army officer to be openly trans. That's a fucking shame. So you broke barriers. You wanted to fight for the country. You wanted to be the first of our people to fight, right? And then you, you're a Russian spy. Like what the fuck's wrong with you, sis? While identifying as a woman, the indictment against her repeatedly uses male pronouns to describe Henry. Who, why does that matter? Who cares? The couple attempted to give the confidential information to a Russian embassy employee, but instead handed it over to an undercover FBI agent. That's fucking crazy. So the FBI knew they were up to it and did a sting. So the FBI clocked that this person was trying to sell us out to Russia, Miss Girl, at this time, by the way. And they did a sting. That's really crazy. They've been charged with conspiracy and wrongful disclosure of individually identified health information. That's really vague. I don't understand what that means. Can you put in the comments what that means, anyone? Um, okay, you know, I, I don't have <laughs> I don't have much to fucking say about this bitch other than how dare you? Like we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. I don't know who you were, but uh, the fact that you're breaking barriers and then you go and you sell us out to the Russians, girl. It's like. Where do they do that at? Um, let's go to the next one, guys. I'm loving this vibe, by the way. Please put in the comments if you like this vibe. Like, I, I obviously love having these conversations with, you know, people. And I've had some amazing people come in here. Like, guests that I was low-key shocked that would even say yes. You know, everyone I've asked to come on the show has said yes, by the way. And they've said yes enthusiastically and very quickly. Like, texting Alex Jones. Like, hey, can you come in? Alex came in twice. The first time was a situation. But shout out to Alex. Um... You know, like Chris Hansen, yes, and he flew, Chris Hansen flew out, which is very flattering. You know, um, a lot of people flew out. Ariel flew out. Buck flew out. I love Buck so much. I want to do a part two with Buck because we just spoke so easily. Um, first of all, put in the comments who you guys have liked the most so far, who's been your favorite guest, and maybe I'll have them return. So far, Michael's the only one to return because we hang out every day, anyways. But, um, and also let me know if you like the solo vibe and if you like the vibe. And you let me know you like the vibe. Maybe I'll do more solo episodes because this is fun. I feel like I'm just hanging out with you guys. And the thing about it is I'm really ADHD today. We're going to get to this article. But the thing about it, I just want to say about you guys, you know, I know that my journey in YouTube and in my career and like being like public player or whatever has been very fucking crazy. Um, and I know that there's been like an insane amount of ups and downs. I know that like I've made mistakes. I've done good things, bad things in between things. I know that, you know, flashback to getting beat up on Hollywood Boulevard or the Candace Owens thing, or, you know, there's just been so many weird moments that are so specific to me and there's no one else that's doing kind of like the same shit as me. And you guys have been so loyal over the years. I believe I have one of the most loyal audiences on YouTube and on the internet. You know, I feel very connected with you guys. You guys know that I'm, you know, 
while being very public, I'm also a very private person. So I'm not doing meet and greets. I'm not going to a lot of these in-person events. I'm not, you know, necessarily like interacting with a lot of you guys privately in DMs, but I see everything. I appreciate everything. And the way you guys have had my back over the years is just unreal. And I just want to keep making you guys, you know, proud and just keep hanging out with you guys and talking shit, you know? Um, but let me stop being an emotional bitch. But I do love you guys, you know? All right, guys, FX's AHS NYC is the next installment of the award-winning anthology series American Horror Story created by Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk. Big fan of the series, by the way. With two all-new episodes each week, it promises to be a season like no other. The show stars favorites returning like Zachary Kinto, Billy Lord, along with some fresh faces, including Russell Tovey and Charlie Carver. Something evil is coming. FX is AHS NYC premieres October 19th on FX and you can stream it on Hulu. All right, Shannon Brandt charged with murder and death of Kaylor Ellingson, who was allegedly ran over by SUV. Okay, so this is the story, you guys. Um, it was politically motivated. So basically, this lib ran over um, this 18-year-old kid, fatally you know, injuring him, and it was entirely politically motivated, and it was because the kid was an open Republican. And, you know, that's really fucking sad. I, I'll, I'll read a little bit first. Shannon Brandt, the man who was accused of fatally hitting Kaylor Ellingson with an SUV, has been charged with murder and the death of the 18-year-old, and new information alleges that the teenager was run over by an SUV. Brandt, 41, was initially arrested after police say that he fatally hit Ellingson with an SUV during the early mornings of September 18th after a street dance that took place at a local bar in McHenry, North Dakota. Court documents state that Brandt initially fled the scene and told the 911 op operator that Ellingson was a part of a Republican extremist group, adding that the teenager was calling on others to go get him. Um, he was released from jail on September 20th after posting a $50,000 bond, and while he was not placed on house arrest or curfew, he could not leave North Dakota or drink. So first of all, why wasn't he placed on house arrest or curfew? And second of all, where did this weird-looking dude get 50 grand bail? I mean, actually, you know what? I'll take that back. I'm wrong for even making that judgment because first of all, you never know how much money someone has. And second of all, I think it's like 10% you have to pay to bail someone out of jail if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Yeah. It's like it's, it's not the full amount, right? You don't have to cop up 50K to get out. But anyways, that's the least important part of the fucking story. I'm sorry. Um, wh what's really crazy is, you know, I feel like for years, tensions have just been so high and... We're just so accustomed to not seeing each other as people, right? And this level of political violence is, it, it it leads to something bigger, right? Like it's not as if it stops, it keeps going unless someone really puts a stop to it. And it's just disappointing that an 18 year old can have their life taken over something as stupid as these labels that we put ourselves in. I'm team red and I'm team blue and I'm a Republican. I'm not saying I'm some fucking centrist or some apolitical person. Clearly I've chosen a side, right? I have voted a certain way my entire life, which has been Republican. However, even as much as I get driven just like insane, right? With the shit that goes on, on the left and how much like that makes up all the content I make on YouTube, right? And I'm always bitching about it. And no matter how disgusting some of those people are, I never have gotten to the point where I started seeing them as non-humans, where I started seeing them as worthy of me putting my hands on them or running them over or doing something physically harmful to them. And so the fact that people can really get there in their mind is really fucking crazy. And it doesn't really help that you have a fucking president who does a whole press conference with demon red lights. Pretend these are, are fucking red right behind me. They're beautiful, by the way. I like the purple and the pink, right? I pointed the wrong way, purple and pink. Um, it doesn't help you have a president who does an entire press conference with the sole intent of talking about how MAGA Republicans, which is such a cringe phrase, by the way, are an enemy to the country, irredeemable, blah, blah, blah. But also no one heard anyone, right? What are you talking about? Because also this happened after that press conference. And I guarantee you, if Trump was still in office and Trump did a press conference like that, which first of all, he never fucking did. He never said fucking... I don't know, Bernie bros are an enemy to the country. If anything, he praised Bernie bros, which were the exact opposite of his supporters, right? If anything, he was like, I understand where they're coming from and they understand me a little bit, right? But even if he did some hateful, dedicated, full-on speech to how like 
lived out Dems are an enemy to the country and and can't be forgiven and and need to join the rest of society, blah, blah, blah. W would you have seen it the other way around? Would people be running over libs? Like maybe, but that never happened because Trump wasn't a piece of shit who believed in igniting that. So I don't know why more people aren't making the connection that just a few days after this demented Biden speech about how MAGA Republicans are an enemy to the state, something like this happens, but it would not be surprising if it was linked, right? And people would be making that link if it was the other way around. Um, you know, it's just really sad. I saw some video on Twitter, I think, of this guy when he was getting um, interviewed, and he seemed completely oblivious to why he was in trouble at all, right? He was saying, like, you know, I'm a family person. I just want to go home. Like, let me know when this can be over, blah, blah, blah. Dude, you ran and killed over, you ran over and killed a kid. Like, you don't get to go home after that. I mean, you literally did, but your freedom is, is forever lost for that, and as it should be. I mean, but... This goes to show you, he didn't feel like he ran over a person. He felt like he ran over a MAGA Republican, an enemy to the state, a hate monger. You know, that's what he felt like he was doing. And he has every institution in the country telling him that, that, he, that, that he was right to feel that way, right? Not to kill someone. It's not saying every institution encourages that. But what I'm saying is the general feel of like, this is my enemy. He has every piece of media prop propaganda that exists right now telling him that's the case. And you know what? You, you really can't underestimate how fucking stupid people are, right? You can, I, I consistently underestimate how many people are literally told something and they just believe it because that's the first thing they heard, right? So to get these people to shake this concept that they have these enemies, right, is never gonna happen. Um, and it's really scary because you have like Kathy Griffin calling for, recently on Twitter, calling for a civil war, making some weird comment about a civil war as if as if that'd be good for their side, the side that doesn't know how to shoot guns. Like, just saying. Um, but the fact that that's bubbling up and bubbling up is really scary. And people think that it's like this new thing, right? Not really. I mean, what was I in 2017 getting assaulted on Hollywood Boulevard for wearing a MAGA hat? I think Tim Pool talked about that recently on Timcast. Someone said like, oh, this is a new thing. And Tim was like, uh, Blair got beat up in 2017. Um, but that, that, that's what one year into the Trump administration when like nothing bad was even happening. Like it's only worse now, but you know, it's really sad. We have to get to the point, you guys, where we see each other as people and people that we're sharing this planet with. And, you know, I'm like, I've been saying as much of an anti-collectivist as I can be, I'm a hyper individualist. However, I still, you know, am aware that I'm sharing this land with people and you can't, you can't allow what is 98% media propaganda to get you in this headspace of like, that's my enemy. I can run them over. Like who the fuck does that? Anyways, uh, next article. Okay. Eminem's goes woke with purple spokes candy pushing acceptance and inclusivity. First of all, that's the ugliest Eminem I've seen, which is fitting. Like this Eminem is not a vibe. It's shaped like an egg. That's not a nice shade of purple. And it just looks, you know what? It looks genderless, which I guess is what they're trying to do. Didn't they take the, the woman um, Eminem out recently? Or they did something where they switched up her look to make her look like a man. Like, isn't it funny how like the pro women shit always end up just being anti-woman? Like, like they go so hard. I don't know if this is what that's doing, but the, on the green Eminem, the girl one, they go so fucking hard to promote like women and, and letting women have their moment. And like, but their methods are like very much anti-woman. Like, Let's erase women to support women. Like, are you okay? Are you stupid? Anyways, this this article's fucking stupid. Eminem's has an all new singing, all dancing color candy on the way. The first female peanut spokes candy will be purple. Wait, so this one's a female and is delivering and is charged with delivering acceptance and inclusivity through music, song, and performative arts to a waiting world. Can we just talk about this concept of like inclusivity? Because I feel like people have this attitude where like hyper inclusivity is somehow the vibe as if something shouldn't be exclusive, right? Like inclusivity at all costs. I'm not saying you exclude people from the right to participate in society. I'm not saying that you should ex exclude people from, you know, like not being hired because they're, black or gay or trans, whatever. I'm 100% against that. I'm for equality in the true sense. However, this like inclusivity at all costs, 
why does everyone have to be included in all things at all times? How is that good for anyone? You know, you see it with like the transport shit. It's like, why does it have to be inclusive? Clearly there's enough of y'all bitching about it. There's enough of you to make your own fucking leagues. Why does it have to be inclusive? On the women's side only, by the way. I mean, I guess there's not as much of an issue with like the men's side, but but even that, it's like, you know what? It's like not everything has to include you. Not everything's your vibe, not everything's your lane. You have to find your lane, stay in your lane and rock it the hardest you fucking can, but not every lane is your lane. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, and acceptance, I guess, you know, it's these companies trap you, right? Because they'll say things like this m &M's about acceptance and inclusivity. Who the fuck wants to be against that, right? But it's just annoying. It's just obnoxious. I don't understand it. Next article. Let's see. What are these hoes doing? Lead oversight Republican. House GOP majority to investigate Hunter Biden and the Biden family. That's fucking crazy. Um, you know, it's so funny. I'll read the article. Don't worry. But you're catching on to the vibe now. I have to like rant and then read the article and then rant more and then whatever. So. It's so funny to me how if you, <laughs> I would say if you think about it, but you don't have to even think that hard about it. It's just clear as day, black and white objective that Hunter Biden is literally everything that the establishment wanted Trump Jr. to be tenfold. Right. I don't think it, ever in their dizziest daydreams would they think that like it'd be like crack with Trump Jr. <laughs> like maybe some coke, maybe a little, you know, there's some hard partying, maybe a mistress. Maybe like, you know, maybe even some light Me Too stuff, right? Crack with hookers and filming it every time you do it, by the way. Who films themselves doing crack every fucking time? I don't want to make this a light thing, though, because what's actually the scary part of the story is how censored the topic of the Biden laptop was, right? You had, um, what's his name? The, the CEO of Meta or Facebook? The one that looks like a robot, Mark Zuckerberg. Duh, am I stupid? Um, going on uh, Rogan and admitting that they, via their algorithm, censored the Hunter Biden story and the laptop story and everything that was found on the laptop, right? That they, it was actively censored at the request of the DNC. Why do we live in a world where anything's off topic? Why are we sliding towards China? Like, I know that a lot of people that watch my content and God bless you, I don't believe in God, but God bless you are on the younger side. And I appreciate that so much because not a lot of, you know, right wing influencers even have young audiences because they're all fucking boring, but I appreciate you, but you might not know how the world used to work. <laughs> there used to be a time where back in, back in my childhood, where this concept of like, you can't talk about things wasn't like a thing. Like everything was on the table. I mean, there were things that would offend people for sure. It's not as if it was some like non-offended society at all times. You know, there were issues that you would maybe want to tread lightly on because they were sensitive, like the old trope of like not talking about like religion or politics with people, right? But there wasn't this thing where like, oh, this news story, I am not allowed to talk about it. I am not allowed to share my feelings about it with others. I am not allowed to even acknowledge it. That was not a thing. And it's really fucked up that it's a thing now. Like, and you saw it all throughout the Panini. You saw like so many things now that they admit to be true. If you were just guilty of saying it too soon, you were censored off social media, you were taken down, you had your life ruined, you were canceled, you lost your career, everything fell apart for you for the sin of just being correct too early, right? Like we know now, and it's confirmed that COVID isn't airborne. There are people that knew that in the very beginning or it, it, it is airborne. I mean, like outside, rather. Outside the transmission risk is basically zilch. There was a time where people were saying that and they were getting banned for saying that because their only son was saying it too soon. Too soon. So, you know, this is, this is a new sort of world, even for me as someone who is, you know, I'm not old, bitch. 20, I almost said 20, I'm 29 now. I just had my birthday. I went to Miami with uh, Michael, JC, my friend Wolf. It was so fun. Um, we had a ball, although Miami is kind of ratchet. Like, I'm not going to lie. There were a few places in Miami that I straight up feared for my safety. Like, and we didn't even go to like the hood, whatever the hood is of Miami. But, we, you know, we were in nice places. I swam with dolphins. That was really fun. Um, but anyways, what was I talking about? 
Oh yeah. Um, the fact that there are things you can't talk about, right? The fact that you can't get things right too soon, otherwise you're banned off social media forever. And there's no retroactive like fixing it, right? So like I know people that were banned for saying shit that is now accepted and universally true. Like, hey, there are negative effects of lockdowns and people's mental health. Literally, if you said that back then, you were fucked. Like it was a wrap for your account, right? So I know people that were banned for that kind of stuff. And now that it's just true and taken as common truth, no one's going back and unbanning them. They're just, their lives are ruined forever. So that is the line you have to constantly walk in this world. But I don't want to live in a world where you have to walk that line. I don't want to live in a world where their things are off limits. Why is it off limits that the son of the president smoked crack with hookers? Like I, especially when there's such a double standard that if it happened to a Republican, a public, a, a Republican president, we'd be still hearing about it, right? Like you still hear about the Access Hollywood tapes. We would be hearing about Don Jr. doing that shit forever. Don Jr., by the way, I'm gonna need you to stop stealing my tweets. I said what I said. Don Jr., I, he follows me. And there has been like three or four times where I've tweeted something and it was worded in a very specific way because I take very much pride in my tweets and having them go viral. I take pride in that. And all of a sudden, a few hours later, I would see him basically saying the exact same thing. Love you, Don Jr., but just hit a retweet. You don't have to copy paste and change it up. Hit a retweet. Um, <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was, my ADHD is like crazy right now. Okay, here's one more, you guys. And this one is something I'm gonna be really passionate about. Not that I wasn't passionate about the rest, but this one might hit a, an emotional chord with me. Former DEA agent warns fentanyl targeting children. The DEA has made major fentanyl seizures across the U.S. The agency announced earlier this week it confiscated 36 million lethal doses of the drug in multiple states over a five-month period. Now, the thing about this is like, you want to talk about what's really killing people in mass still, and you, you another thing you just can't talk about, which I don't know why. Can someone explain why I can't talk about it in the comments? I would love an explanation for why this is a taboo subject to talk about. Maybe it's because everyone's on drugs. I don't know. Um, fentanyl. It's killing just masses of people, more people than at various stages of COVID, right? And it's just not presented as some like top issue for either side. The Republicans aren't addressing it. The Democrats aren't addressing it. And it's just wiping people the fuck out, right? I know. I don't. Here's the thing. I know exactly zero people who died from COVID. I know exactly zero people who know anyone who died of COVID, right? And that's an anecdote. That's my life. I'm not saying that that means that no one died from fucking COVID. Clearly, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying I don't know anyone and I don't know anyone who know anyone who died from COVID. I know two people who died from fentanyl, right? One of them the fentanyl just happened to have been snuck in another substance that he was taking. So it was an accident. I mean, it, the, both situations were an accident. No one's trying to die from fentanyl. But the first one was the person thought they were doing something else and it ended up having a little speck of fentanyl and he died, right? That's the first story. The other person I know recently died um, for doing fentanyl, which I don't understand that, first of all. I don't understand if, if, if like a speck can take someone out on their finger. I don't understand how you can do it. Um, my mind doesn't even. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but you know, it's 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 a thing, and it's and and I don't understand why it's not being addressed by people, especially when it has so heavily to do with the border. You would think that like the right would be more on it because it is a border issue, but for some reason, no one's addressing it. I I don't understand. And when you tweet about this, like I've seen people with like no followers just tweet about this, and their tweets go viral. That's one thing about like the Twitter algorithm is like when you see stuff go viral out of nowhere, I often see it as like bubbling up under the human consciousness. It's like everyone's like thinking about it, but no one's talking about it. So then finally someone talks about it and it's like, okay, you're going viral for even mentioning this shit. Um, you know, it's fucked. Like I, I, I don't know what else to say because that's one of those issues that I don't have the solution for. All I know is that I wish people who are more capable of finding and or creating that solution would do so and do so hastily because it's literally killing people. So listen, that was all the articles, guys. I had a lot of fun. Um, I really liked doing the solo episodes. This to me was more fun than 
I'm not trying to be disrespectful to any of the guests because I loved all of them for what they were, but this was more fun to me than even some of the, the guest episodes because I just get to talk myself, right? Like y'all discovered me because of me talking, not because of me talking to other people. So if I'm here talking by myself, that's kind of what you guys know me for anyways. Um, I love you guys. I have so much planned right now and so much in the works. Um, I just really appreciate you guys staying with this podcast, staying with my main channel, staying with me over the, over, you know, all these years. I can't believe I'm 29. Like when I met you guys, I was 23. What is that? I can't. Uh, I love you guys. And make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast channel. Subscribe to my main channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Um, let's hang out. Bye guys.